Hey guys, it is January 26, 2019. I saw this article. I, it was posted today in The Guardian. The sheriffs resisting Washington's new gun laws. I'm not going to enforce that. I thought, oh, okay, let me check it out. Newly implemented ballot initiative and upcoming bills could produce some of the strictest gun laws in the United States in Washington state. Um, well, what is it? Klickitat County Sheriff Bob Songer said this about the initiative, which is 1639 that was passed by 60% of Washingtonians. 40% were against it, and the 40% were uh, pretty much from 27 counties out of the 39 counties, 27 counties, rural areas of Washington. But Bob Songer said the initiative is unconstitutional on several grounds. I've taken the position that as an elected official, I am not going to enforce that law. Boy, do we need more sheriffs like that in town. He also said that if other agencies attempted to seize weapons from county residents under the auspices of the new laws, he would consider preventively uh, standing in their doorway and seize weapons because I went to check out this initiative and it didn't say anything about seizing weapons so I did a little bit of research and sure enough Washington passed a red flag law. So I'm going to get into the states that have passed and are about to pass red flag laws and I was pretty surprised to see the rapidity with which red flag laws are making their way all over the country. Um, and Republican governors are signing them. So this initiative here, uh, efforts to repeal or block enforcement of uh, I-1639, Republic Washington, so I guess there's a city called Republic, Republic Washington, Police Chief Lauren Culp proposed on the police department's Facebook page and later to the city council that what he called a Second Amendment Sanctuary City Ordinance that would make 1639 null and void by the city of Republic. Ow, sorry. I just tried to shut the window. Um, and he said, as long as I am chief of police, no Republic police officer will infringe on a citizen's right to keep and bear arms. Period. Good, good, good. Um, I thought it was interesting, some of this, you know, the background checks. Uh, you now have to wait 10 days before, you know, you can pick up your gun and um, I thought it was interesting that you sign away your confidentiality once you sign an application to purchase a pistol well now it's for everything what does that mean I'm not entirely sure this is not the actual law I thought I would make it easy to just get a summary of it, but um, it says that a court or law enforcement agency may request a mental health institution or other health care facilities to release information based on your application. So the application itself, signing it, is a waiver of confidentiality okay uh, that is probably something a lot of people don't know in Washington of course the Department of Licensing gets their fee uh, 10 days you've got to wait um, but this okay now again I would have to go to the actual law and read this provision because what I'm reading all right well, if somebody wants to go to the actual law and read it, um, tell me if this is right. 
a person who left a firearm in a place where a prohibited person, someone who's prohibited from possessing a firearm under state or federal law, that person um, could be charged and found guilty of community endangerment, a Class C felony. All right. A person who left a firearm in a place where a prohibited person could potentially gain access to the firearm, you would be guilty. Oh, okay. Now we're passing laws stating you're guilty. Um, even if, you know, that person came into your home, uh, you had it in an area where that person could not, um, didn't have, you know, the right to go uh, into your closet or uh, into a safe or into a gun cabinet, doesn't matter. You have left it in a place where they could gain access to it. If a prohibited person gained access to the firearm, listen to that. This bill doesn't talk about that person using that firearm. It's if that prohibited person gains access to the firearm, you could be facing five years in prison and a $10,000 fine. Wow. Well, reading this, I'm pretty sure that that is what the actual law says. Required sign for firearm retailers. Warning, you've got to now all all the people who sell uh, firearms in Washington, they have to have in block letters a sign displayed publicly that states, warning, you may face criminal prosecution if you store or leave an unsecured firearm where a person who is prohibited from possessing firearms can and does obtain possession, not use, um, just possession. Does that mean now every person you invite into your home, you've got to ask if they are prohibited from owning, possessing firearms? I guess so. A person under 21 years of age cannot purchase a pistol or a semi-automatic assault rifle. I guess it used to be 18, now it's 21, but listen to this. All right, persons between the ages of 18 and 21 would be able to possess a pistol or semi-automatic under the following conditions. In the person's residence, in the person's fixed place of business on real property under the person's control or for the specific purpose of moving to a new place of residence, traveling to and from the allowed locations and selling or transferring the firearm in accordance with other provisions. Oh, so when you're 18, you can sell it, you can transfer it, you can you can travel with it, you can have it at your residence or your business or just on your property. You just can't purchase it until you're 21. Am I reading something wrong here? Um, uh, does that make sense? I won't say anything. I'll just let you leave comments. HR 8. These are, this is what is now introduced to be passed and no doubt will be signed by Trump. HR 8, uh, bipartisan background checks of uh, 2019. This federal law will require those who are not licensed dealers to get licensed.
and do national background checks. So those who sell guns online or at gun shows, or even if you sell it to a neighbor, you're going to have to do a background check on licensed gun sellers you've got to utilize the same system required by licensed dealers Trump yeah his school safety commission begs states for red flag laws okay you listen to this guy talk, and boy, does he talk a big game. But then he appoints people to carry out the United Nations agendas. Please, get out of your red-blue dichotomous paradigm. They're all on the same team. And this guy, uh, he sure did snucker a lot of people. Snooker, snucker, whatever. Um, so, <laughs> there is bipartisan support for red flag gun confiscation, and it is growing. We're looking at the, and I, my hunch is that this time it's going to be passed. Mark Rubio, he's reintroducing legislation and I don't know why this turned green but I mean gray but it did so he's reintroducing a bill that seeks to encourage states to pass red flag laws that would make it easier for courts to disarm dangerous people the measure has garnered bipartisan support um, the measure did garner but now he's reintroduced it and what has he said? This idea has already proven successful in states like Florida, and it is my hope that this bill will get all the other states in the country to do the same thing, and Trump is on board. He's on board, and he will sign it. Um, the bipartisan support? Wow. All right, so just in case you don't know what red flag laws are, um, grossly unconstitutional, uh, the Sixth Amendment, due process rights, thrown out the window. But you heard Trump, okay? You heard him after the Parkland shooting. What did he say? Hey, and I paraphrase, uh, we're going to just take the guns and uh, due process, you know, second. First, we're taking the guns. Second, due process. You listen to this guy who's supposed to be protecting your constitutional rights. He took an oath to support the Constitution, and then he so flagrantly told you to your face, I don't give a shit about the Constitution. Oh, okay, but I still support the guy. No, <laughs> well, oh boy. Um, so, red flag laws, or another name, extreme risk protection orders, are kind of like going for a restraining order. That's how easy it is for the police to confiscate guns. You know how easy it is to get a restraining order? I, I did an internship when I was in law school in the domestic violence unit uh, in Massachusetts. And I learned that judges will issue restraining orders pretty much every single time a woman comes in to ask for it, especially. Why? Even if they know the woman is lying, should something happen and the judge didn't issue the restraining order, that judge will be on the hook. Don't you think the same thing is going to happen with the red flag laws? Of course it will. And let me tell you, oh boy, do people lie. Yeah, women lie a lot to get restraining orders. 
Not all women, but there are. And it's, oh boy, you know, lying, manipulating, gaslighting, you see it all. And you will be seeing it with these red flag laws. Um, okay, so under a red flag law, law enforcement has the ability to confiscate an individual's firearms if they are deemed a threat to themselves or others. A simple accusation from a family member, friend, or associate will suffice to seize someone's firearms. Now, I would have to go to every state's law to read um, if that's in fact the case, a friend, associate. But I have gone to several, and I've read them, and it says family member or household member, which means, oh, a friend that you happen to have as a housemate or uh, you know a uh, an intimate partner or just a roommate but even if it wasn't that kind of relationship families how many do you know that want revenge against a family member you know uh, uh, a sister out to get you a brother seeking revenge uh, an angry spouse, spouses uh, going through a divorce, they're splitting up. Oh, wow. And I'm sure you all know, divorce brings out the big gun lies. No pun intended. Um, all you have to do is pick up the phone, report a family member or a friend, or a household member, a housemate, roommate, say that they're suicidal or homicidal. The police come, take away that person's guns, and then, then, the individual has minimal due process rights. He can actually, or she can, stand in court and say, uh, what? What you're hearing, Your Honor, is not true, but then the judge is going to be on the hook if he doesn't issue the order. You don't have to have any mental illness history. No documentation, no diagnose, nothing. But once somebody reports you, then you will have a history being made. You will be evaluated. Your mental health will be evaluated. These laws bring about a nightmare for an awful lot of innocent people. Um, they, they are in complete violation of due process. Uh, individuals can take their accuser to court even though the defendant in question has never been charged with or convicted of a crime. Additionally, the defendant could have their weapons confiscated and once confiscated, yeah, it's going to be a little bit hard to get it back. But the gun control bipartisan status quo, well, yeah, you love that campaign rhetoric. Trump did it. Obama does it. Clinton did it. They all do it. They all speak the game. Hey! And they play their base. And then they screw you. And we see it time and time and time again. Well, all politicians do that. So, Republicans. Bipartisan support for red flag laws. And the Rubio um is to encourage states to pass these laws. And how does that go? It goes like this. You want funding? Pass the law. Money talks. That is how Common Core got signed um, by governors around the country. You want funding? 
then you adopt Common Core standards. You want funding? You pass red flag laws. And states will be passing them. And that's Mark Rubio, Republican. What are the other Republicans? Lindsey Graham, South Carolina Senator, already introduced a red flag bill earlier. Mark Rubio, Mitt Romney, Utah Senator, incoming, um, well, from when this article was posted, um, he was an anti-gun governor in Massachusetts, and he passed, uh, signed a law to ban assault weapons in Massachusetts in 2004. When he was campaigning for the presidency, he was pro-Second Amendment. Watch what he does. He'll sign red flag law legislation. Rick Scott, of course. Well, um, Florida's governor, who Rick Scott is Mr. New World Order. He will be signing that legislation. And the Trump administration, with their his commission on school safety, they released a report recommending red flag laws be passed in all states. So, um, the governors that have signed on to these laws, well, John Rowland in Connecticut, 1999, whew, he was, well, right out of the gate, ahead of his time. Mitch Daniels, Indiana, 2005. Rick Scott, uh, Florida, 2018. Larry Hogan, Maryland, 2018. Phil Scott, Vermont, 2018. Charlie Barker, Massachusetts, 2018. Bruce Rohner, Illinois, 2018. Two Republican-controlled legislatures have passed these bills, Indiana and Florida. No, your Republicans are not going to save you. Uh, but Maryland, since Maryland uh, passed this law, the red flag law, October 2018, 300 court orders for guns. Now, that's the 300 protective orders. How many guns did Maryland confiscate from Maryland residents? The petition for the order in Maryland, it uh, asks for details concerning the respondents' risk of danger to themselves or others, their behaviors, and their firearms. It's filed with district court, and petitioners to request the orders could be a spouse, an intimate partner, family member, law enforcement officer, medical professional. But you need to read the laws because a lot of these mainstream media articles leave out a lot of details Delaware red flag law, now in effect. D.C. red flag law, now in effect. And the states that are going to be passing, Wisconsin, New York, Nebraska, Ohio, Minnesota, South Carolina, North Dakota, Colorado, yep, Minnesota, uh, all of these states also, it's not just red flag laws. They have introduced legislation that they're gung-ho to pass, which means it will be passed shortly for um, more and more restrictions on your Second Amendment right. And they will pass it if you don't get involved. California has a red flag law. And also for 2019, laws became effective. And listen to this. More than a dozen new gun laws passed by California go into effect in 2019, including a lifetime gun ownership ban for those involuntarily admitted 
to a mental health facility. And you know what? An awful lot of people are involuntarily admitted, admitted to psychiatric institutions when they do not need to be. Another California law requires a lifetime ban on gun ownership for anyone who has a domestic violence offense, but not guilty, just an offender. I need to have to look into your actual law. Does it mean that you have to be found guilty? Or does it mean that you've been charged? Or somebody gets a restraining order on you? Um, they're wanting to take the guns. That's the point. Virginia, these are the states with Republicans that don't go along with Trump. Uh, the Republicans in Virginia don't endorse Trump's red flag law, but the Democrats are fighting for it in Virginia. So, um, you sit back, it's going to happen. Um, Georgia, this is interesting. Georgia is uh, House Bill 2 could legalize permitless gun carry in Georgia. These are the states that are actually, you know, fighting to um, ensure your Second Amendment right. So in this article, it, it quotes a former Houston County District Attorney Kelly Burke as stating, good guys with guns don't bother me, bad guys with guns bother me but they don't care what the law is. So let's favor toward the good guys with the guns. So uh, you may be able to just not have to pay the fees, get a permit to carry in Georgia. It's so frightening to me to see how people just don't think in our country they don't think. And anybody who thinks that guns are the issue. Well, uh, actually, you know, trying to get to the root cause of our problems is just not the American way. We like that. Yeah. We want that quick fix. Take away the guns. But the criminals will get the guns. You know, Illinois had the most restrictive gun laws, and Illinois, even with those laws, still had high, high gun violence. So it's been proven that this kind of legislation does not work. But people think, hey, it's going to do something. What's it going to do? If somebody wants to shoot somebody up with a gun, they're going to get the gun. Oh. Well, Arkansas. Arkansas uh, wants to expand rights of gun owners in the state. The Republicans, not the Democrats. The Re Democrats are uh, wanting to pass the red flag law. So it is it is very, very important to... Um, you know, check out the law in your state that may have already gone into effect. 22 states, many with Republican governors, enacted 50 new laws restricting access to guns. Those states, California, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Nebraska, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, Vermont, Washington, Wisconsin. Some of those states have already passed red flag laws. Some are just about to pass them. Um, and there are other um, 
legis there's other legislation that has been passed or will be passed that restricts your gun rights. So um, check it out in your state. Minnesota, New York, Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania is another state that's getting ready to pass red flag laws. Many states have already passed legislation banning bump stocks and high capacity magazines. Um, many states are getting ready to pass those laws. Seven states expanded access to guns in 2018. Oh, I wish this went into a little bit more detail, but it didn't. Iowa approved a resolution to enshrine the right to bear arms in the state constitution, and now the state house and senate has to pass a measure a second time to, um, you know, make sure that it stays put or you need a constitutional amendment. Um, yeah, sorry guys. This is how they do it. They implement it incrementally, passing these laws. Republicans, Democrat, don't matter. And anybody, I'm telling you, these laws are so unbelievably uh, in violation of your Second Amendment, your Sixth Amendment due process rights, but, you know, Trump already told you he doesn't give a shit about your due process rights. So federal uh, legislation will be passed and signed by Trump, no doubt. But if you want to check out the issues to watch uh, governing the states and localities, 18 of the biggest policies and problems legislatures will confront in 2019. If you can't get it done in the federal government, you get it done in state governments. And that's what's happening. So Medicaid, uh, and this is this is for states. Um, Medicaid, tax reform, paid sick leave, marijuana, education funding, voting, blockchain, minimum wage, environmental regulations that you might want to check out, census. Census, e-scooters, union protections, work requirements, road funding, guns, taxing opioids, abortion, college tuition. Okay, I will link below to it all. Uh, they're going to get your guns one way or the other. So, if you want to keep them, if you uh, like the Second Amendment, get involved in your state. All links are below.